I was a pastor's kid. I grew up as a pastor's kid. My battle right now is not cancer, my battle is fear. It went from like bad, really bad, to like worse. If her life is short or her life is long, her life needs to matter. Got into some trouble, made some really bad mistakes. I was in a very broken place. God won't accept me the way I am. Everything that I thought of God was wrong. And I really felt Jesus was right next to me. These children that God's given us belong to Him first and foremost. Uh, we just have a season here on earth to parent them. Our first ministry is actually our family. And our um, first discipleship is with our children. Our children. Yeah. We are very, I would say, pretty calm. <laughs> We're a pretty calm family. We like to create a lot of art things and making things and make believe. This one is Abby. She's our oldest one. She's five. My favorite thing is to art. I like to color. Abby is very sweet uh, and she is a really good helper. Olivia. Olivia is four. Olivia is passionate. <laughs> uh, she's like very single-minded, focused. Whoa. Whatever she puts her mind on or sets her goal, she needs to get it done. Mm -hmm. And Bethany, you're two. two? Yeah, Almost Bethany's three. Two. You're funny, right, Bethany? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she is our social butterfly, and she loves people. She loves to have fun. She loves to laugh. Eli. This is Eli, Elijah, but we call him Eli. And he is 10 months old. Very chill. Or right? maybe overwhelmed. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah. He, yeah, he's very quiet. He's very observant. Bethany, your favorite puzzles. Children are a fruit of a marriage. And a marriage is a fruit of God's divine appointment to bring two people together so that we could co-create with him, but also be creators in this world in the time that he's placed us in. I grew up as a pastor's kid, uh, PK. My parents are immigrants, Korean, uh, Korean immigrants, and I was born in Korea. When I was about uh, seven years old, uh, our family immigrated to Los Angeles, California, where my dad was a pastor and also grad student in divinity school. My parents always had a, uh, even when they were in Korea, uh, in the 1980s, they had this deep calling for China and for Chinese people. My parents moved our family to Taiwan while my parents was getting ready to go into mainland. I was a pastor's kid, was born in Chicago. My father was called into the ministry, so he became a pastor when I was very little. So I always grew up um, knowing about Jesus, knowing about God, we went to church. Even as a child, I vividly remember uh, experiencing God's presence. But it wasn't until, I think, high school when I was in Taiwan as a missionary kid, along with other missionaries, I began to have my own longing for God and also just commitment to make Him my Lord and Savior. I didn't encounter God personally to make Him Lord of my life until college. I wanted to live the life that my parents wouldn't allow me to live, and then also the self-imposed religious regulations that I thought I had to live by got into some trouble. I got into a really bad relationship and made some really bad mistakes. I, I was in a very broken place. God won't accept me the way I am because, you know, the God I knew was I had to be perfect. So I went to Korea and that was kind of the more socially acceptable way to get away according to my culture and my background. I think that's where the Lord knew. He set up people in my life that were I believe like just the angels that he put to speak to me and show love and care. And um, that's when I want to say I really heard God's voice. I was just by myself in my dorm room. One of my roommates had said, you have to listen to this sermon. Um, I never listened to it, but that night I was like, I feel like I want to listen to it tonight. And I turned it on and it was, do you really believe that God is good? The Lord just rocked me. I just, I just wept in my room. And I really felt Jesus was right next to me, and he just embraced me. And I realized, like, you know, 
everything that I thought of God was wrong. Like, He was so good. He wasn't a father who was trying to keep me from good things. He was trying to protect me and lead me to good things. And so um, that was true repentance. I, I felt true turning, uh, true heart change, and I felt the embrace of Jesus. How awesome, like how much more awesome does it get? And that's when I said, Jesus, you are Lord of my life. You can have everything. And so, yeah, that was that was the day that everything changed. He faithfully healed and took everything from my past, has made it new and beautiful. And um, I have a family, I have an amazing husband, um, and he uses um, my brokenness to um, speak and reach out to other women. And so that's been uh, so powerful for um, for powerful for me to see God use someone like me. My wife is like fire, <laughs> and she's not passionate for God at all costs. She's all in or, you know, nothing. My husband is a dreamer. He's fun, and um, he has an incredible ability to connect with people. An incredible servant heart. Uh, he will be the first to see a need and make sure it's all set up. Uh, for that person. One thing for us, I think for me, that was really big before we got married and we were dating, I actually was very adamant to share my story with him because I wanted to make sure that he knew what he was getting into. And his response, it was, we both cried, and his response was, I love you, I love all of you. Do not hide any part of you um, because this is your story. This is what made you, and um, he said, don't ever feel ashamed to ever share any part of your story. Um, and I feel like that's, that's him. I work for a software company that provides uh, software for wealth managing fir firms and banks. And in the company, I'm a uh, investment performance analyst. I'm a teacher by trade, and after I had my four children, I to, chose to stay at home and be a stay-at-home mom, but also wanted to continue teaching. I work for a company in China where we get to teach English to kids in China. I wake up at four and I get ready and then I teach for two hours, teaching four kids every morning. I'm out by seven to help the kids get ready, eat breakfast, get dressed, and uh, go to school. We plan on being out in Southeast Asia for missions through business and put kingdom business in place and influence uh, actually the financial industry. And one of, one of the hopes that we sense that God's doing is as we venture on into uh, mission, business as missions, we felt like God is going to do something uh, for the children as well. Uh, uh, opening their eyes to see what God's doing, the kingdom work that's doing in Asia. When she, Debbie was pregnant with Bethany, and we found out that she had actually some complications. They did a bunch of tests. Your baby in your womb has a tumor. Could possibly be uh, cancerous. My initial reaction was shock. I can't explain this next reaction other than Holy Spirit He's speaking to me in that moment and saying, I am going to show my glory. God, I'm going to set the stage for you. I'm going to do whatever needs to happen so everyone can see what you are going to do through this circumstance. We're pastoring a church. We have shared a lot of people to contend for a breakthrough. Tell everyone as much as, like, get on board, let's pray, and let's see this happen together. People got excited because they initially saw the faith in us and hope in us. I felt like I was saying, like, what difference are we going to make in the world if we react just like everyone else? And then what we what we found out later on was that there was a second tumor that happened. So it went from like bad, really bad, to like worse. My battle right now is not cancer. My battle is fear. People were like, oh, you know, they're like sympathizing for us, right? And it's feeling awkward. The first tumor was on her lung, and the second one was um, in the abdomen. They didn't know where exactly. Debbie kind of led the charge, and I kind of followed her lead. If her life is short or her life is long, her life needs to matter, and her life needs to glorify God. And as her mom, I want to walk in freedom and hope and faith. 
We shared it with our girls and our family. We made it a point to, before Abby and Olivia, bring this before God. Model faith, model courage in the face of circumstances that are very difficult. We went back again and that one got bigger. And so they, at that point they said, it's, it's a ruptured ovarian cyst. Like, what do we do this from this point on? And so we fought in proactivity, in not in the defense, oh God, hope I hope you can help, but God, do what you need to do. You know, God, we're on your side. God, do the miracle that you want to do. They couldn't do anything until she was born. We went to the hospital. That whole labor, they were so afraid. All the doctors wanted to call in every team possible and induce and all these different things. You know, we're not going to walk in that fear. We'll have a labor as she wants to come. The NICU team didn't even make it on time. She was born so, so wonderfully healthy, no complications, no breathing problems. They all predicted all those things. They checked her out immediately. They said that the cyst was becoming detached. She went in for surgery at two months to remove it. Amazing surgery, amazing recovery. And yeah, yes, yes, we're talking about you. How did you know? <laughs> You're such a little fighter. Mm -hmm. And then um, we went in for checkups, three months at a time to check on the other, um, the other tumor. And the doctor came in and looked at us and said, it's gone. It's gone. We just praised God and gave glory to God. And this is his story. This is his story. And she's a miracle and she's feisty and she's fun and her middle name means is truth, Bethany Truth. And we knew that she was going to declare the truth of who God is, despite what your circumstances are, despite what is coming up against you. The truth of God is that he's good. Everything we do is is around the Word of God. So we read the Word together. They have their own Bibles. And so when we do quiet times and devotions, get your Bibles so they get it and we do it together. My understanding of what it means to be a son or a daughter or being in a family is that it's all about the family business. And the family business that Genesis uh, narrates is a business about creating. But He created us as sons and daughters in His family to be co-creators with Him. And so when I look at our children, uh, they're God's gift to us, uh, made, created in our image, and obviously as parents we reflect uh, God Himself ultimately. One of our core beliefs is that all of our children have uh, a calling and a destiny and a purpose that has been set for such a time as this. There are a couple things I want to make sure that they, they know and they know deep in their heart is to know who they are in Christ that they're made to do amazing and awesome supernatural things. We need to steward that. We need to come to know that. And so we, as we seek the Lord in that, uh, He reveals to us who they are in Him. It's our parental responsibility to nurture that into fruition. Something we will always tell them, you're going to change the world. Um, if they don't know that at a young age, I believe that they will just believe that life is gonna, you know, it's what you what, what you make of it. You just go with the flow. But to know that they're made, they're put here on earth to partner with God to change the world. Four is enough. Yeah. Four is I, good right You know, now. when we got married, I told Debbie that I just wanted one child, one kid, and then you know, God really convicted us. You know, it's He's not all about in the business of uh, addition, it's multiplication. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh shoot. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> hopefully we, we've done a part. <laughs> God is love and love comes from God. In 1 John, the Bible tells us that God is not only all loving, but that He actually is love itself. The heart of the Parent Compass television show is to bring the transforming love of God to families everywhere. In every Parent Compass episode, true stories reveal family struggles and how their lives were radically changed by the love of God. Parent Compass, an award-winning television series, is completely funded by people like you. 
If you have been touched by God and you want to share God's love to others, would you please pass it on? Jesus tells us to go into all the world and to tell about Him. With your donation, you allow us to take this television show into many different nations and in many different languages, free of charge. And a portion of your donation goes to Parent Compass Outreach to feed starving children. Your gift does so much. To make your tax-deductible gift, go to parentcompass.tv forward slash donate. That's parentcompass.tv forward slash donate. And thank you for sending love and hope around the world.